Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for trading session, the um, Tuesday, the 13th of September, 2016. Okay, be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, folks, now the markets has been... Or should we say the market has been very volatile Friday and Monday? Uh, amazing moves uh, in either direction, two to three percent almost. Ridiculous uh, uh, swings in U.S. markets. I mean, just look at the uh, S&P for example. Let's just bring up the S&P, or even the Nasdaq. I mean, look at the move in the Nasdaq. I mean, we had a, a gap lower, sell off all the way down. I think uh, the overnight session you had a low of four six thirty, and then you had a reversal back up to four seven sixty. I mean, it's been uh, quite remarkable. So one hell of a rally, one hell of a sell-off, okay? So again, very, very impressive trying to oscillate between those two uh, zones has certainly been very, very tricky. I mean, you can look at a 60-minute chart even with even uh, uh, more accuracy. You have um, the FIB 75% and the market's obviously retracing from there. Okay, now, in terms of the, uh, the actual uh, bias at present in European markets, let's just bring up the uh, fundamentals first and foremost. Okay, so Asian markets overnight, you had the Hang Seng higher, although it's, it lost everything in the last few last few minutes. You had the Shanghai more or less flat overnight, and you had the uh, the Nikkei higher. Uh, in terms of the Asian session, you had stronger Chinese data out overnight. We had strong industrial production. We had stronger retail sales from China. Certainly a bullish bias from uh, the Chinese economy, although that wasn't uh, actually uh, received well in the uh, European session. So. We had Mr. Brainard, or Miss Brainard certainly uh, coming out with the uh, dovish uh, rhetoric, which everybody had feared was going to be hawkish, and that certainly led to a uh, short squeeze in the, in the in the actual markets themselves. U.S. markets have sold off subsequently since, okay, and it's caused the uh, European markets certainly to swoon and, and sway as well, okay. Now, in terms of uh, inflation days from Germany, certainly came in on the weaker side, therefore supporting the bullish argument, okay. In terms of other economic data, we had Italian data that certainly came out stronger than expected industrial output. Uh, we've had UK inflation as well on the weaker side. So again, supporting the argument for more QE via the BOE. And uh, certainly does give Carney some uh, respect in terms of his preemptive uh, QE. Okay, now in terms of ZEW from Germany, slightly weaker current situation, but economic sentiment certainly stronger, almost double. Than expected okay we do have mr draghi we had a draghi speech or comments from mr draghi uh, and then employment change is certainly coming in on the stronger side now we're looking forward to um, the optimism business optimism red book index uh, we have uh, api weekly crude oil stock again that's going to be very important we have had the iea this morning certainly forecasting weakness in terms of oil demand okay so again that certainly has knocked the footsie on its head and sent the uh, the actual index lower even though Brainard's dovish comments certainly helped the uh, the actual market. So again, certainly some uh, some food for thought in terms of the market there. Uh, I have been stopped out my FTSE longs this morning as well, so certainly um, certainly um, uh, frustrated from that perspective. But let's bring up the actual FTSE itself now, okay? Let's bring up the FTSE 100. Let's go to the daily chart first and foremost. Yes, you are below the neckline. So that's certainly something that you need to understand and, and uh, obviously interpret. Now, one of the reasons why this h &S formation will not play out is due to the fact that Brainard was actually dovish, not hawkish. OK, and obviously I sent the US markets in the opposite direction. So, again, certainly some food for thought there. I'll, I'll add in the fact that you have stronger Chinese data as well. Therefore, one would uh, obviously lead to believe that you are not going to trigger that h &S. 60 minute chart of this resistance level at 6726 certainly held. Even though overnight we were as high as 6,770, which again is kind of frustrating. Okay, so now the FTSE 100 taking the pivot high to the pivot low. You are looking for at least a 50 to a 50 to 61 percent retracement on the FTSE if we can get past this 6,725 zone. That certainly is the uh, the real hurdle at present. Okay, and again, oil price is certainly not helping as well. Aussie and Kiwi are into support, so again, uh, the dollar side of the equation is certainly weak as well. Okay, uh, UK inflation holds, pound drops, and analysts react. So again, a weaker inflation data is certainly helping the FTSE in terms of a weaker sterling. If I just bring up the cut chart of sterling for you, folks. Okay, we also have the bonds as well. I can bring up the bonds, the UK gilt. So again, you can see sterling dropping there. With sterling dropping, obviously, that's helping the... Uh, the actual uh, FTSE 100 rally. Okay, so again, watch out for that. In terms of the FTSE 100, let's just quickly bring up the FTSE 250. 
uh, as you can see here the daily chart the FTSE 250 we are into that potential support zone okay held by a weaker sterling so again certainly some food for thought we have bounced off the low and uh, we'll see exactly how this market sustains itself okay in terms of the FTSE going back to the FTSE again 60 minute chart like I said looking for that 6720 zone to be attacked okay 10 minute chart the FTSE again given the fact that we've had weaker inflation we've retested previous resistance equals support at this 6680 zone looking to test that 6725 pivot high and potentially even break higher so again all eyes on that zone there okay especially with US markets like I said higher overnight we have uh, although they have given back majority of the gains okay and uh, all are given the fact that Chinese data was stronger than expected okay in terms of the German DAX now, folks, let's bring up the German DAX for you. Let's go to the daily chart, first of all. Certainly uh, an argument here that a potential double top is in. Uh, we're, we were attempting to close a gap above, given the weaker euro. Okay, even though Mr. Reynard's comments certainly have come in very dovish, certainly euro has failed to pop. Okay, and uh, you certainly have seen a move higher, but you, we are respecting this key diagonal trend line. So again, certainly looking for some respect there but again the uh, the actual unfilled gap above certainly remains vulnerable to being closed so bear that in mind uh, the french gap we've gone lower close the gap there is a gap above okay so again looking to potentially target the gap above uh, coming into that potential horizontal support zone here as well so certainly some uh, food for thought in terms of the uh, the markets uh, proving to be bullish and bouncing higher so again looking for that potential gap above okay in terms of the uh, euro stocks let's just quickly bring the euro stocks for you and uh, give you an insight there in terms of euro stocks okay so euro stocks going to the daily chart okay so daily chart you had this bottoming tail yesterday you have this key diagonal trend line and daily chart certainly looking to potentially hold given the fact that we have stronger chinese data generally indicates more demand for european equities or european goods and services and therefore equity or eu equities certainly move higher looking at a 10 minute chart you certainly have a potential double bottom being formed okay we've certainly gone lower and closed the gap but for now we have this horizontal support certainly looking to hold and potentially attacking that 3030 pivot high so again looking at double bottom support here and looking for a move higher up to uh, 3030 on the euro stocks and again like i said the unfilled gap at 3050 remains open it's certainly strange how we uh, certainly moved higher overnight in the uh, in the actual uh, overnight market on the uh, the euro stocks up to 3050 and now we've subsequently reversed so interesting okay certainly is interesting how uh, overnight the futures certainly pushed very high and have um, subsequently given that back okay so again some wild wild moves in the market okay so again uh, from my perspective we're certainly looking for a bullish bias at this juncture and certainly looking for a move higher again the FTSE 100 certainly will be imperative here very very important to see whether or not we can retest that 6725 zone on the FTSE and then we can see exactly where the market reacts from there for now you certainly have put in a higher low okay so looking for a higher high now and again that gap fill at 6775 certainly is uh, is in range okay uh, on that note be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the additional bonus goodbye now folks